Welcome back to camp, guys. I'm glad I finally got to put the bag down. Um, although I love the, the old school wax canvas bags and things like that, they're definitely not the most comfortable and definitely don't carry uh, weight as well, especially when you're carrying an ax and a big saw and things like that um, and a uh, canvas tent. So uh, yeah, it's good to put that down. In any case, welcome back to the channel. Um, as you can see, I'm definitely not in the mountains. Um, I am in a fairly local woodland here tonight for a hot tent camp. Um, so I finally got to a spot which looks relatively flat. You probably can't tell on camera, um, but uh, it's actually quite bumpy. There's a lot of stumps and things like that. So I found an area that looks uh, like there'll be a spot big enough for me to lay down. Um, I'm just gonna clear uh, some of these, these oak leaves off the ground and hopefully find a flat enough spot. And if so, we'll go ahead and set the hot tin up and I'll uh, get back to you soon. Okay, all right, now that we got the leaves clear, uh, <laughs> it's definitely not as flat as I would have liked it, but it looks like there might be a, a flat enough spot um, on this side to uh, to lay on a little bumpy but the pad should take care of most of that and if anything if it's a little unlevel I could bring some of these leaves back in and try to, to smooth it out to give me a flatter spot um, all right so I think I might try something a little bit different today and actually instead of hanging the Lebu up or using the pole rather uh, to put it up that comes with the, the Polish Lebu I think I'm gonna actually there's a nice branch that's actually right above uh, this is kind of hanging over. I think I might try to run some paracord over it and see if I can maybe suspend the Lavu tonight to maybe give me a little more extra room so I don't have to worry about the pole in the way as well. So I can maybe find a more comfortable spot. So um, let's try to do that. can't never escape the climate. <laughs> so no, normally for this you'd want to find like a stone or something to place in the top of the Lavu. Um, I don't have one and I don't see any anywhere so I'm going to try to maybe either find or cut a piece of uh, wood, small like toggle. Um, so that I can place in there to uh, tie the, the paracord around to hold it up. So we're gonna find that now. All right. All right, this should work. I'll just take a couple pieces of this, make them small enough that I can make something to sit in top of the, in top of the peak and then the fabric will go around it and then I'll just tie. Um, a knot, and that should be enough to, to hold it up. There we go. Just ball it up. And then I'm going to tie a knot around the top, and that should allow me to, uh, to raise it. Mm, nothing fancy. Just a couple knots. And then a hitch at the end. Perfect. All right, I'll just go get something else, a stick or something, tie this. I could throw it over the uh, the branch that's just above me. So I'm actually using that same branch I uh, broke to put in the Lavu here. Give me a little weight so I could throw it up over this. Reminds me of hanging a bear bag. I don't really have to do that since I've moved here, but uh, living in North America, uh, had to do this quite often. All right, perfect. Oh. All right. Just want to make sure the branch is strong enough to hold the weight of the Lavu. I don't want it crashing down on me with. 
the stove running. Yeah, it looks good. Alright. That's not bad. I can adjust the height in just a second. Just want to get the pegs. Uh, try to peg it out. See if I need to lift it or uh, lower it in. Took a bit of work. I've actually never done it this way before. Um, so I didn't really have to adjust the height much, but uh, just getting it as taut as possible. This one's always a little tough to get um, a top pitch, but uh, I tried to elongate it a little bit just to give me a little more room um, down the length uh, of the tent where I'll be laying in the back here. So um, yeah, so let's go ahead and get the ground sheet inside, see if it's flat-ish. Ground sheet. Oh yeah. Not too shabby. So this time around, um, I don't know if anyone's watched my previous hot tent videos. Um, the, the last one I did last winter, I actually forgot this piece and I had to use uh, two sticks to kind of hold the armhole of one of the ponchos uh, out so that I could actually put the, the pipe through, um, which again, I wouldn't recommend. Uh, it can be dangerous, obviously, if it you know breaks or um, you knock it in the middle of the night and the hot pipe is up against this, uh, it could go up in flames. So you wanna be really careful. Um, that's why these things are really great, just to protect it. The only problem is when using this, I can't actually use the piece with the damper directly inside and control it um, because it gets in the way of the uh, little protector sleeve here. So what I typically have to do is use um, another piece and then place the damper on the outside of the tent, um, which isn't too big of a deal because I think, actually I mentioned this in uh, a, a comment that I made uh, to someone recently. I usually actually don't even mess with this at night. Um, I usually leave it wide open and I'll just control uh, the stove through um, uh, the, the front. So uh, not too big of a deal, but it is a little bit of an inconvenience if you do wanna be able to control this. Um, and it's only because in, in this Polish Lavoo, which really isn't designed for this, it's just so low uh, that you can't actually place uh, both of these in there. So. Alright, I'll take my gloves off a little bit easier here. Plenty of space now between the pipe 
and then give the tint. All right, there we go. She's all together. It took a little bit longer than anticipated getting the, the, the Levu up specifically. But uh, we <laughs> got about 30 minutes before sunset, so uh, got to get a move on getting wood. Luckily, I don't know if you can see in the camera, but there's uh, downed trees literally everywhere, so it shouldn't be too difficult to find wood. Um, and it hasn't rained in a, a few days, so that's good. So, yeah, let's go do it. So yeah, this was only about, I don't know, 40 feet from the tent, so uh, this will this will actually give me quite a bit. And then I'll try to look around and find some uh, some bigger stuff to uh, split for uh, later in the evening just to keep it going. So one thing you do have to keep in mind when using um, any stove, really, uh, is definitely know the depth of your stove so you know roughly how long uh, to cut everything so you can fit it in. The worst thing is uh, in the middle of the night trying to fit a big uh, log in and it's too long and you can't close the door. So yeah, definitely make sure uh, if you are using one of these or if you're new to hot tent camping um, that you, uh, you know the length of your stove and it's a good idea to just go take one over, uh, stick it in and see if it uh, fits and then you can use that to kind of measure out any other pieces. Oh, and I'm really glad I just followed my own advice because this piece is about an inch or two too long. So that'll be the length I'm looking for. So I've got a fairly decent amount to start with. Um, there's a nice little log here, so I'm gonna split up some of these. Uh, so some of these pieces, a little moist inside, starting to go a little punky. This just has a tiny bit, but it should be okay.
go ahead and get a light on inside the tent, bring the wood in. Um, and then uh, I'll try to go collect some smaller stuff to get the fire started, uh, and then we'll start cooking. One of the great things about the Lavu and the canvas is it's incredibly dark in there, which is really nice if you do want to sleep in. Um, but you absolutely have to have a light if you want to see anything if the fire's not going in there. Almost ready to get started. Uh, I saw some birch, uh, little patch of birch trees, not too far over there. So I'm gonna go see if I can find some birch bark that would help get things going a lot quicker. So let's go do that. All right, so this is perfect. This guy right here, you can see, is broken off at the top, so it's already dead. So I'll be able to uh, take some from that because most of these others. I didn't really have any good curls for me to take off without damaging the tree, so I'm going to harvest it from this guy right here. Alright, so that should be perfect. I was just out collecting the last little bit of small stuff to get the fire going. But I just wanted to show you, um, so you can see it's, it's getting pretty dark now, but the tent, because of the, uh, the canvas material, I'm literally standing right in front of it right now and you can't see it at all. Um, but if I come around the door side, it's pretty incredible. So. If you're one of those who are into stealth camping and things like that, um, these Polish Lavoos, or really, I guess, any um, canvas, dark canvas tent like this are really great because you can have the light on full and you can't see anything through the uh, material. All right, let's get this fire started. All right, I figure I'd give you a little tour here. I think I'm all settled. Um, so I've got our wood, got a little bit behind there as well. So a decent amount. Um, got some birch bark and some of the smaller stuff to get the, uh, the fire started. But uh, as you can see, the door's open. It's dark, you can't really see anything. Um, so I'll be sleeping in this side. I'll be moving my bag over there uh, once I'm ready to get to bed. Um, and then this way, my head end, uh, carbon monoxide detector, something I always have when I'm doing these hot tent camps. So we got some pretty decent hardwood, a fair amount. Um, I, if I was going to have the stove going all night, I would definitely have more. Um, I actually have outside the, uh, the, the Levu, um, a much larger, um, piece I dragged over that if I, you know, I do want to stay up a little bit later, I can cut it up, um, and put it in. But other than that, my, my sleeping bag and everything is more than sufficient uh, for, for tonight. So um, just enough, hopefully, to, to be comfortable and uh, yeah, hang out by the fire in a very warm tent. So um, yeah, let's get the fire started and then get cooking. Put some of the really small stuff on the bottom. And kind of slowly work my way up. So 
that should be plenty to get it going and then I'll put this other stuff in uh, after to get it really going and then we can put some of the larger pieces in. So the birch bark collected, I'll just take some of those pieces and place it right underneath, leaving a little gap to light it. And then even a few of these other pieces on top, kind of in between. And then I'll save a couple just in case if I do want to keep it going later tonight and the fire happens to go out on me. So I can start it up quickly. Get a couple green branches in there. Oh boy. There. So to start the fire, I'm going to use um, this, what is it called? Uh, Tender Wick and Bellow, which I got from uh, Uberleben. I've had quite a few people ask me about this. Um, so it's actually really, it's nice. I mean, I, I usually carry a lighter on me anyway, but um, a little, a little more fun to uh, start the fire with. Um, and it's also a lot easier because once you actually have a flame, you can adjust um, how much, and then you can easily put it on, under um, your kindling and things like that to get it going. But um, yeah, I've actually really enjoyed it since I've, I've got it. Um, and I actually even like it better than a lighter. Um, because I've, you know, kept it out in the cold, and sometimes little Bic lighters can be kind of hard to, to start if you don't keep them close to your body and warm them up. Um, but this has gotten wet on me. Um, it's been in the cold, and yeah, it starts every time. You just got to fluff up the fibers a bit, and it works really great. the mud jacks are calling so yeah once you get it started pretty easy to um, adjust the, the size of the flame if you want but really easy to manipulate and actually get under um, get underneath here to light the birch bark so unlike a lighter which would be hard to actually um, manipulate to get under there I can just kind of even leave this here um, for as long as it needs to actually catch the uh, the birch bark on fire because it was a little wet. She's going now. So having this is incredible. I mean, it's 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 not cold, but it's uh, definitely not too hot. I can actually have my hand here, um, and this thing's pumping off heat now. It's already gotten quite a bit warmer in here. So I've taken off my coat, gotten a little more comfortable. Um, yeah. So let's uh, finally start dinner.
can see that. So, salmon cream of spinach with tomato. I don't know what to call it. <laughs> First bite. Yeah, it's just one of those meals, the first time I made it, I was just so surprised at how good it tasted. I've made this meal a few times at home. Um, my wife and kids really like it, but um, fairly simple. It's just um, you sear the uh, salmon first, then set it aside. Um, then with butter and olive oil, you, um, you cook the garlic until it's just starting to get fragrant. Add the uh, quarter cherry tomatoes, let it reduce a little bit. Um, then add the spinach, um, cream, parmesan, basil, thyme. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much it. Uh, usually I add red pepper flake as well, but I forgot it. Um, but yeah, it's really, really good. And um, it's awesome to uh, dip the baguette in with the, the leftover sauce. I've actually made a pasta with it before as well, um, which is which is pretty good too. All right, I'm not gonna bore you while I'm eating, so I'll finish this and then I'll get back to you. And then I'm, um, instead of beers tonight, I've got a little something different. I'm gonna do some mold wine. Um, so we'll do that after this. All right, talk to you in a bit. Um, if anyone's wondering how I do dishes or anything, um, on a one night overnight trip like this, I, I don't, I don't, <laughs> simple enough, unless I'm cooking breakfast. Um, so I'll just take the dirty pan, put it in a, a bag, um, and seal it. That's pretty much all I do. Uh, don't even worry about it. If I was going on a multi-day trip or something like that, like I said, if I was using it to cook breakfast in the morning, I would, I would clean it, but since I'm not, um, yeah, just go ahead and put it in a Ziploc. Uh, that way I can pack it and just worry about it when I get home. All right, so now it's time for dessert. Um, so I've got a few things um, to make some mold wine. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, get that on. I gotta get the cutting board back out. Um, I've got basically this, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, little packet. I, I've used these before. Um, so it's basically like a, a tea bag. Um, and so you add it to the wine. It's got a lot of the spices and things like that. Uh, but to add to it as well, I've got cinnamon, um, some sugar, a little vanilla, and an orange um, that I'll add to it and then we'll put it on there to um, hopefully slowly heat up. All right, so let's get started. All right, so to do the mold wine, I just have my little canteen cook kit here. I'll put everything in that. Cinnamon stick. A little bit of sugar. Mold wine tea bag. All right, a few slices of uh, orange here. It's looking pretty good. And then finally, the vino. So now I just have to be careful not to boil it <laughs> because then I just burn off all the alcohol. Don't want to do that. That's just crazy. All right, so all set. All right, so I'm just going to place it on the side toward the front here where the stove's hopefully the coolest. Turn it down. Almost forgot. Add a little dash of vanilla. Just 
just wanted to show you guys. I actually let me take this off so you can actually hear me. Um, I had to shut the door because it it started sprinkling a little bit. I think it's only supposed to sprinkle for I don't know two hours or something. Not, it, nothing more than that. So I doubt the inner part will even get wet at all. But um, someone had asked me in a comment previously um, what it's like with the uh, with it open if it is raining. Um, and so I don't know if you can see it, but a few little raindrops um, on the this guy. Uh, but any that come in, and I have it pushed back actually. Um, if I had it pushed forward, it would probably just fall straight behind it to the ground. But um, any little drops will come in and land right on the stove and just uh, vaporize. So really, really not that bad if it is raining. And I've been in this... Um, the last winter's hot tent camp. It actually rained from, I want to say, 7 or 8 p.m. to, I don't know, about 4 in the morning, 5 in the morning. Um, pretty hard rain as well. So the, the tent did actually get saturated from about, I don't know if you can see, uh, from about here down, it was completely drenched. Everything above that was, was dry just because of the heat. But yeah, this isn't supposed to rain very long at all tonight, so... I should be fine, but even if it does, I was able to, last time it did rain, um, you know, sleep just far enough away from it that I didn't get wet or uh, any of my bags got wet, so. But yeah, so anyone wondering about the space in here? Um, so I did have to close the door, like I said, because of the uh, little bit of rain coming through, but um, moved my shoes over, uh, put my pack over here, and then, I'm laying down now. As you can see, I have clearly enough space for my toes. Um, if it was raining, I'd probably try to move a little bit more, more forward, or I would put a uh, raincoat or my bag at the very end just to keep my sleeping bag off this portion of the tent because it can actually get a little damp. Put plenty of room off to the side of my jacket. And then my head will be at this end. So yeah, I'm doing pretty good on wood. Um, I've been in the tent for a few hours now, and uh, as you can see, I mean, you know, I put a little bit of a dent in it, but these are actually some of the bigger pieces. So I was lucky enough to find some really dry hard wood, and it's actually working really well for me. Um, whew, but having this door closed with the <laughs> with the um, stove on is uh, pretty hot. I think it's only around one degree outside right now. Uh, last I checked. Sorry, I'm trying to hold the phone here. Um, but yeah, it's, it's actually sweltering from here up. Um, I don't know if you can see, I'm sort of sweat a little bit. Um, but yeah, once it stops, I'll probably open the door up again just to uh, to cool it down a little bit in here because it does get a little hot. As you can see, it's not that big of a space. So when the stove is going, um, it really does heat it up quite a bit. All right, well, hopefully this finishes up pretty soon. I'll let you know how it tastes. All right, so it's been on about 15, 20 minutes or so now. Um, it is steaming, but again, not boiling, which is good. Let's give it a go without spilling everything. garnish in there. And so now I'll just keep it like that right beside the stove and that actually will uh, be close enough to just keep it warm for me while I finish my my first one. See how it tastes. pretty good. It's nice to have a warm drink too. Even though it's not 
cold at all <laughs> in here. It's cold outside. I went out just a second to go to the bathroom, um, and it's very cold and actually quite foggy out there. The air is really damp, um, so it feels way colder out there uh, than it does in here. I should have brought, I, and I always forget something, but I should have brought a thermometer so I could have um, measured it for you guys to uh, show you what the temperature is. I want to say a couple years ago, um, I brought it on one of the one of my trips, and I, I want to say it was like it was below zero or below 32 Fahrenheit, um, and I want to say it was like 20 C or, or 70, a little of over 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so it's it's quite warm, especially if you keep the door closed. I actually usually always have the door open. Um, if it's not raining, just to kind of vent it a little bit because it can get a little too warm. But, um, yeah, it's not bad. Quite comfortable at the moment. Wood's doing pretty good. I'd say it'll probably last me until around midnight, um, which is fine. I, I really am not in the mood to keep stoking the fire all night. I've done it, and I actually did it on my last camp. And I'd say on average you have to probably wake up, I don't know, every two hours or so to put a log in. Um... Which isn't too bad, but again, I'd rather just sleep through the night. And my sleeping bag's more than enough to keep me warm, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, and it'll just allow me to pack up and get out of here a little bit quicker tomorrow morning, uh, so I don't have to wait for it to cool down. So the stove I'm using is actually the G stove. I believe it's made in Norway. Um, I want to say I got it about four years ago. Uh, yeah, four or five years ago. It's a great stove. Um, it's built like a tank. Uh, it will probably last a lifetime. The only downside with it is it's just really, really heavy. Um, and so, you know, it's fine for taking on like canoe camps or for, um, I've done a couple uh, sl sled camps. It's fine for that. But carrying it, like I've done these past two trips, um, is just absolutely brutal. I put it in a duffel bag, but still... Um, it, it's, it's tough. Uh, I think the last trip I did, I hiked about three miles or so total. Um, today, much less, I'd say maybe a little over a half a mile to get to this spot. Um, so it really wasn't very far at all. Um, but yeah, it's just really heavy. I'm, I'm really envious of a lot of those guys that I see having the, uh, I want to say their Pamali is the brand, uh, which didn't exist when I, I feel like when I bought this stove. Um, I actually had to ship this um, from Norway. So yeah, the, the Molly didn't even exist back then. Um, but yeah, now the stoves have gotten really nice where they're, they fold up. Um, and they're a heck of a lot lighter than this. But um, I like it, and it's really awesome to cook on. Uh, super efficient, so I keep using it. Eventually one day I may get a titanium stove just to... Uh, do some longer treks with backpacking and things like that because this really isn't made for backpacking even though I, I, I do it but oh, I had to take off my uh, wool shirt <laughs> it's just gotten way too hot in here since I've closed the door but anyway about this tent so yeah so there's it's made of two ponchos um, so basically you have one here and one here and the soldiers would actually button them together to make the levu and you can actually see um these were actually kind of like the shoulders and then these areas here would unbutton and that's actually what's unbuttoned on this side to um allow the soldiers arms to go through and then this would be the hood um but yeah so the soldiers would button them together and they could make this really nice teepee um which is more than big enough for two people as you can see is you know especially without the stove in here but um yeah really cool bit of kit and I mean this thing will last forever I mean these are actually pretty old this one is from let me see if I can show you the date here I don't know if you can see it so that one's 1989 um and this one is from all right this one's gonna be a little bit harder to see here I don't know if you can see it focus all right there so yeah 1976 so yeah really really cool bit of history um and you know fantastic 
for these kinds of trips with the the hot tent because you know hot tents have come down in price but most hot tents are actually quite expensive especially if they're made out of um, something like this this canvas material so um, you know although it's small it's it's really really nice as a hot tent or just a you know a bushcraft style shelter so uh yeah i really like it and I, I guess i'm glad i got it when i did because um yeah i guess they're pretty hard to come by now but um yeah really really cool and for the most part pretty weather resistant i mean it you know even though the material does get saturated um you know last time I, and in the video i guess you didn't really get to see it but it, it poured absolutely poured all night long um and you know it was completely dry inside the uh the the tent did get wet um but you know any tent with condensate condensation is even going to get wet so it really wasn't a big deal nothing ever dripped on me so it kept me dry the whole time um which is really cool i'd say the only downside is they are a bit heavy but um you know, I'm, car I'm carrying this gigantic thing, so I'm not really worried about weight when I do this kind of uh, camp. So, yeah, really cool, really cool tent. Found some wood going. All right, I'm gonna stop chatting. Just enjoy my mold wine. Listen to the crackle. All right. So as you can hear, the rain picked up a little bit. Um, I guess now it's going to rain a little bit harder. <laughs> it says only for about an hour. I actually have cell phone signal, which is really kind of nice um, when I do these local woodland camps, depending on the woodland. Um, this one actually has... Um, decent enough signal where I can get updates like that but yeah it's not raining too hard we'll see I'll let you guys know if it actually um, soaks through at all I haven't actually treated this with anything in a long time um, I can't remember the product I used but I, I did actually uh, use a spray um, water uh, repellent coating on it a couple years ago but I haven't actually done anything since um, so I don't know we'll see most of the stuff's off the sides my bag is against it but it's wax canvas and it, it should be fine um, but yeah hopefully it doesn't continue for too long I'm definitely feeling the heat it's probably the alcohol too um, <laughs> so I'm a little warm in here I'd love to open the door again but yeah. All right, bed saw set up. Um, it's still sprinkling outside, but it's starting to calm down. It's been raining for about three hours now or so. Um, it's around 11.30. Um, I think I'm going to go to bed. Uh, pretty much out of wood. I've got three pieces left. I just put two in. Um, yeah, so it'll probably last in a couple hours or so, but it's okay. I'll be fine in the sleeping bag. The walls of the tent are... They're not wet, but they feel really cold. Um, you can tell it's wet on the outside, though. Um, I'm, I've put my jacket actually around the base of my um, sleeping bag just in case any of the water tries to soak through uh, to keep the bag dry. But, uh, yeah, other than that, I think I'm going to go to bed. Um, yeah, it's been a good night. Just relaxing. I just posted a picture on Instagram. I know it's it's sad. I'm like out here and I'm on my phone, but uh, I don't usually have cell phone service when I go out. So um, yeah, I just posted a picture of uh, some of the mold wine. Um, 
yeah, that's about it. Uh, so I will catch you guys in the morning. Later. morning uh, so it is around uh, my phone is like 6:45 or so um, yeah it's not raining now pretty much rained off and on all night um, so you can see the, the fire went out around I don't know a little after midnight um, Temperature, of course, yeah, it did get colder in here, but I mean, I'm fine in my sleeping bag. Uh, so the fly did get a little wet to the touch, but I was far enough back from it. Um, and I put my coat at the base of my sleeping bag so my feet didn't get wet. Um, so, yeah, everything's dry inside. Um, yeah. So I brought the Trangia. I'm just going to, um, instead of getting the fire started uh, this morning and waiting for the stove to cool down, I'm just going to um, use the Trangia and do my coffee that way, and then we'll get back up and get out of here. Unfortunately, all I could find was one of these Nescaf two-in-ones. Cowboy coffee. Uh, well, at least it's warm. All right. Well, I'm gonna try to finish this, and then, um, yeah, I'm gonna pack up everything, and then uh, I'll I'll see you guys when I head outside of the tent. Just wanted to show you guys real quick if anyone's um, curious about the water repellency of this this old canvas material as you can see it rained pretty much all night um, and it's still beating up there are a few spots like right over here where it did start to soak through 
Um, but again, I didn't get wet in the tent, so um, it's probably due for another coating, but um, it's still doing pretty good. Uh, most of the water beat it off, and like I said, it pretty much rained off and on all night. Yeah, so if you take a look at the inside versus the outside, you can see it actually remained dry. Um, it did feel moist, and it still feels moist, but um, dry compared to the outside. So for those that are curious, this is actually how they size these Laboos. So you can either get a one, a two, or a three. Um, so I guess small, medium, and large. So this is the, the second um, size. But um, yeah, this works pretty well for me. I think the only difference in sizes is a few inches, maybe. Um, two or three inches. But uh, yeah, so this is a size two Laboo. If you're looking to get one yourself. All right guys, well, that's another trip on the books. Um, so as you can see, leave no trace, very important. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments below. Again, thank you for all the support lately. Probably next trip I'll be back in the hills somewhere, either Lake District, Peak District, or maybe even back in Wales, I don't know. Um, so yeah, again, any questions, just let me know in the comments. And yeah, that's it. So uh, please like, share, and get outside. I'll see you on the next one.